Hey, is that Chris Frostad? He's president and CEO of PeerPoint Uranium. So, Chris, why don't you take it away? Thanks, Dave. Um, actually, it's, it's fun being number three because there's a lot of things I don't have to go over again now. So we've covered uranium's good, Saskatchewan's great, Athabasca Basin's better. So uh, we can get right into our fabulous projects here. And uh, once we get past this, um, yeah, it's been a busy year for us. And, uh, and, and like most people on this panel, uh, we've been up here for a while um work in the basin and uh and it's 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 been a good good year and a half uh behind us and probably another year or two in front of us uh with with uranium prices and and the excitement around the sector uh growing so it's allowed us really to get back out to work in a way that we haven't been able to for the last 10 years for sure um the quick overview here you see our uh, our projects are all here in orange uh, the, the two on the left, uh, Hook Lake and Smart Lake, are joint ventures we have with, with Cameco and Arano. Uh, Hook Lake is one of our, our primary projects. It, it sits right on the edge of the basin and uh, adjacent to, to Dev's fabulous project down there at Triple R. Thank you, Dev. And, uh, and Next Gen Zero uh, as well, just on the edge. So we've spent a lot of time on that project and, and we'll give you a quick update on what we're doing out there. Um, our focus this year was drilling uh, our Red Willow project over on the east side of the basin. Uh, it sits right along that mine trend you see. It's at the edge of the basin, so it's rather shallow. And, uh, and uh, we, we had some, some interesting uh, results come out of it this year, so we'll go over those as well. We want to get over this year again, uh, drilling to Turner Lake, uh, which, which again is adjacent to um, ISO Energy's uh, hurricane zone and, and recent findings there, and I'll show you what we're up to there. And this summer, we're actually doing a lot of uh, airborne geophysics over a lot of our other projects uh, along that trend, getting them ready for to take up a drill as well. All of the projects on the east, we own 100% of, and as I mentioned, the two on the west are joint ventures. Um, so this last winter, we were drilling at our Red Willow project, <clears throat> and uh, it's, it's about a 40,000 hectare project. So it's rather large. And what you see there are all the various discrete target zones and areas that we've identified uh, for drilling. The ones in gray, we have not yet gotten a drill to yet. Um, the three bright orange ones, Osprey, Geneva, and Radon, we have done drilling out there. We have got uh, uranium to follow up on in all of those cases. Uh, but we spent our time this last winter at, at our Osprey zone uh, here to the north. And what we found there was rather interesting. We started um, down at the heel here, <clears throat> following up on a, on a, a lens of, of high-grade uranium that we identified some time ago uh, that we haven't really gotten back to take a good look at or follow up on. Uh, but certainly the, the markets and the availability of, of capital has allowed us to get back out there and follow up on it. We started out the season uh, with about a 50-meter uh, step out to follow up on that. And we were fortunate enough to hit it again, and it was identical. The lens was the same place, the same uh, same look and feel. So we we took a bigger step out of 300 meters just to see how far it would go and what it would look on the other side. And again, we hit it again, the same thing. Another 300 meters, another 300 meters. We've chased this thing now for 1.2 kilometers and and keep hitting the same, the same uh, trend, the same uh, radioactivity. Uh, and now we know to be the same mineral, uranium mineralization all the way up that uh, 1.2 kilometers, which is something we've, we haven't seen before uh, in, that, in, that, in that manner. It's certainly indicative of a, of a fairly widespread mineralization event occurring in that region. Um, we ended the program up to the north here with our uh, number 15. We were drilling south of or underneath the target. We're now looking for a proper alteration, proper structure. Uh, to host a deposit to figure out where all this uranium is coming from. Um, we got chased out by the thaw of the winter, but uh, we, we understood now that we, we need to get back up there and follow up on that as quickly as possible. So we've kind of bumped, bumped our Turner Lake uh, drill program by a month, and we'll be heading back up here in uh, early September to, to follow up on that program. We've got another kilometer and a half of, of of, uh, of, of uh, target conductor to the north to keep chasing. We've got another kilometer to the south to keep chasing. And uh, this one this one's turned into something rather exciting for us. So we're, we're, we're anxious to get back there and see what, what we can pull out of the ground in September. <clears throat> um, 
I spoke about our, our Hook Lake uh, project on the, on the west side of the basin. Uh, you see it here outlined in orange. Uh, we are uh, following up on uh, Fission's trend to the Triple R down to the south and, and next gen just to the north there. Um, over 350 million pounds right next door. We identified uh, a deposit right at the claim line we referred to as Spitfire. Um, and uh, because our partners have trouble freeing up budget for anything that doesn't look like it can come up with 100 to 150 million pounds, um, we continued to move north. We, uh, we know that that, uh, that deposit is there, um, but we need, we need something sizably bigger than that. And as we've, we've moved north on that Patterson trend, we've, we've continued to find uh, more mineralization, but, uh, and, we will, and it gets deeper up there, so we will, we will continue to look. Um, what has happened of late, though, that is kind of changing our, our direction here uh, what you see here is a um, it's a gravity survey that was done by the uh, Geological Survey of Canada. It was released a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, what you see in purple is the gravity high, the blue is a gravity low. And what became quite apparent is everywhere we were seeing uh, mineralization, <clears throat> starting down with Triple R, we were we were in some sort of we were in that transition zone. I mean, we we certainly now all understand the rock types and the structure and the models that that we're looking for and that we see every time we start to see uranium. Uh, but in this case, you can see that that these all happen in this kind of yellow green green area in the transition and that's indicative of, of that specific rock type that we're seeing in there the other thing though that the uh survey came up with is is uh, looking at the clear water domain here you see in blue was was most likely the heat source which mobilized the uranium and got it moving and that uranium uh would have been moving uh down to the south uh, southeast obviously it's it's found a place to to rest down here triple r same with arrow going to Spitfire and on up. Um, but what it's it's kind of drawn our attention back to is uh, another corridor called the Carter Corridor, <clears throat> which is significantly closer to that heat source than, than Patterson. We actually drilled, we had one drill program out here uh, quite some time ago. That drill program actually predates any of the findings um, on the Patterson Corridor. At that time, we were looking for um, unconformity deposits. We weren't looking for deposits in the basement rock. Um, but now as we go back and look at that core, we realized that, that we were stopping just short. We were starting to come into alterations, starting to come into spiky radioactivity and all the things that would have excited us over on Patterson. So uh, now that we, we know what we're looking at in greater detail, now that we see that this is closer to the heat source, the structures there, we've done significant amounts of, of geophysics over, over the past few years. Um, this is really where our attention is going to be focused moving forward from a drill program perspective. Uh, we are right now this summer uh, doing a, a ZTEM airborne survey over the entire corridor just to get uh, a deeper deeper de definition on, uh, on our geophysics. And from that, we'll be proposing a drill program to our partners uh, later in the fall. So it is our hope and expectation that we'll be out here drilling this in, uh, uh, in January. The third project that we're keen on right now, again, is, is Turner Lake. And Turner Lake is just west of, of Red Willow. It's over on the east side again. Uh, again, we own this 100%. And it is uh, primarily identified by this, this S-shaped granitic dome you see in the middle called the Kelsey Dome. And all of the target conductors wrap around it like somebody stuck their hand in it and gave it a twist. And up the western side is a corridor referred to as the Rock Corridor. Um, Although there's been uh, uranium mineralization found all around the area, this one has been particularly abundant, um, starting with, with Cameco's uh, Laroc showing uh, close to 30% over seven meters. To the south, you've got the alligator showing of Varano's, uh, 3.8 over 10 and a half meters. Uh, these are pretty much eight kilometers apart. So this is a, this is a very long corridor. And then to the, to the north, most recently, ISO Energy's hurricane zone, uh, where they're, they're now um, um, defining out a, a fairly extensive area of, uh, of a deposit uh, over here near the claim line, but they're, they're also uh, looking at moving it uh, further to the east. The corridor then continues on across Pier Point's uh, um, Turner Lake project. We have a number of areas here that, that are targets that we, we expect to get drilling on, but the one that we're um, most keenly interested in at the moment is to the north. It's an area called the, the Sarin Conductor. And back in 1985, SMDC did a seismic line across that conductor, 
well across the total top area. But what we now know, we know that there's about 150 meter fault right at the conductor, which is not an uncommon uh, setting for, for deposition. So this is, a, this is an area we haven't tested yet. The drill has not been put to it. And uh, that'll, that'll be uh, one of the first things we drill when we get out, out to that area. Where am I here? So kind of to sum up what we're up to at the moment. Um, like I mentioned, we, we did our drilling at, at Red Willow uh, at the beginning of the year um, based on the findings there and the, that area of, of uh, long area of, of radioactivity and uranium we found. Uh, we will be uh, following up drilling on that in September. Um, we hope to have time to get out to uh, Turner Lake before the fall program is done. These are both helicopter jobs, so we, we can get out there fairly handily. Uh, over the summer right now, we're doing a fair amount of airborne uh, surveys over under other projects, uh, primarily to define drill targets. And uh, later in the fall, we expect to have our, our budgets and plans uh, for, for Hook Lake, which we would be drilling in January. Uh, we are fully funded to, to do all of this work and more. Uh, so nothing can slow us down, uh, even even the current uh, market drudge. And uh, you know, again, based on what everybody's saying, you know, the fundamentals in uranium are intact, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll counteract to some degree uh, the devastation we've been seeing in the markets lately. But uh, I think it's we've got a lot of work to do ahead of us, and uh, and a good year or so ahead of us. So that's kind of where we leave it, Dave. Great, thank you very much, Chris.